If I were to describe Dandaran as a story, it would be eccentric. The series throws you into a roller coaster that feels thrilling, enjoyable, whilst almost making you faint from the whiplash. As someone who didn't know what to expect when I first started reading the series, every single chapter felt like I just went through a massive journey in this weird world of aliens and spirits in the span of merely 19 pages, if not even lower. But I'm getting somewhat ahead of myself here. What is Dandaran and why is it special? Before answering those questions, we kind of need to dive into the journey of its creator, Yukinobu Tatsu. Yukinobu Tatsu used to be the assistant of Tatsuki Fujimoto as he worked on Chainsaw Man and Fire Punch. He also ended up working with Kaku Juji on Hell's Paradise. And when you look at all these three stories, you end up realizing that they're also very eccentric. These stories, while having certain tropes that we are all familiar with, the way in which they tell their stories and use those tropes feel unconventional and not something that you might normally see. Especially when looking at Chainsaw Man and Fire Punch which are complete mindfucks in their own way. Taking that into account, Yukinobu Tatsu definitely took some level of inspiration from what has made Fujimoto and Juji successful and tried to replicate it in his own way. And thus, we are given Dandaran. Whether you are a manga reader watching this video right now or an anime only by the time the anime is officially airing, I think that nobody really expected the basis of the series to be a journey of a teenager trying desperately to get his balls back. Just merely saying that out loud is hilarious. But somehow, a story that at first feels like a massive shit post ends up bringing forth genuine emotion and charm that isn't easily found in the medium of anime and manga. The relationship with the main characters, Momo and Okarun, is a very slow build that has their very opposing aesthetics and personalities clash against each other in a very interesting way. Even at the beginning of the series, them arguing about the existence of spirits and UFOs is genuinely funny. But after the beginning of the story and them basically struggling together and preventing Okuru being taken over by Turbo Granny, their journey stops becoming one of the extraterrestrial and the occult, but rather an oddly romantic coming of age story. Despite the insanity Dandaran provides for this world on a constant basis, what grabs your attention the most isn't the phenomenal fights illustrated by Tatsu's impeccable art, but rather the down moments where we as the audience see Okarun and Momo come to terms with their feelings for each other in an innocent and natural way. And that ends up being amplified even further with the introduction of both Aira and Gigi, who apart from the fact they both go through very rough conflicts and interpersonal struggles, reflecting their childhood, they also become an obstacle for the relationship between Okarun and Momo as tiny layers of jealousy get added on both sides, which illustrates how much they care for each other despite either side not showing it outwardly. When you have all of these dynamics in the background, you end up receiving a cast of characters that actually feel alive and connected like a family rather than just characters being mixed together for the sake of the plot. The plot of Dandaran is very weird. At first, as much as I had fun with reading the series, I genuinely didn't know how to feel about the direction the series was going. If anything, I felt like the series was directionless, which is why the story of Dandaran and Yukinobu Tatsu's way of writing the series I can only describe as eccentric. While there is an overarching narrative in regards to Okarun trying to retrieve the golden balls, the arcs throughout the story of Dandaran tell their own narrative and focus on newly introduced characters which serve to add even more depth to the world of Dandaran. And when you look at the series in that lens, you start to appreciate the nuances of the series more. The acrobatic Silky arc and the moment between Ira and her mother turn into acrobatic Silky feel extremely personal as we see themes of emotional turmoil and regret. In those being executed perfectly in their backstory as Momo tries to revive Ira, it witnesses the actual tragedy with her mom. The Cursed House arc we see Gigi being sympathetic to the point of him wanting to keep evil eye within him instead of just killing him off after witnessing the amount of sheer suffering he had to endure after being a human sacrifice. These layers slowly but surely add to the story of Dandaran and feel extremely satisfying whenever you reach any of these arts conclusions and witness the payoff that comes from the build up the series does. With Dandaran being about spirits and aliens, despite how much the series with 160 plus chapters under its belt has already thrown at us, as much as I would say that the sky's the limit on where Dandaran can truly go, even that wouldn't be accurate since the possibilities are actually endless. At the time of recording this video, chapter 163 feels as if Pandora's box was finally opened now that the mere title of the series, Dandaran, is implied to have a much more deeper meaning than just the name of the series. 
Dandara now is in a position where the series is truly unpredictable as Yuki Nobutatsu's canvas this deep into the story is still blank, ready to be painted. And speaking of canvas, Yuki Nobutatsu's art and penalty is generally out of this goddamn universe, no pun intended here. The way in which the art complements the world of Dandaran is nothing short of mastery on Tatsu's part, as mere simple panels to climatic double spreads are so unbelievably filled with life and creativity, it is actually frightening. Even if you are someone who isn't much of a fan of the story, it is undeniable that the series never looks boring from an artistic standpoint. So much so, I would dare argue that Dandaran is the best looking manga in Jump Plus and is not even remotely close either. The sheer consistency Dandaran brings to the table on a weekly basis is second to none. Even with the help of assistants, having a weekly manga like Dandaran look as gorgeous as it does is nothing short of an achievement that the there's endless amounts of praise. The character designs when it comes to stuff like certain character transformations and abilities, the plethora of aliens that get introduced, and the absolutely insane looking evil spirits that are incredibly frightening are absolutely perfect in every way. The environments are extremely highly detailed to the point it helps you get immersed in what you are reading. And when you add very simple yet effective paneling, you get a manga that not only is filled to the brim with artistic passion and love, but is also incredibly easy and enjoyable to read, which in my opinion has helped the series get the reputation to be one of the best Jump Plus manga you can get into currently. With how phenomenal the manga is from top to bottom, the enemy has a lot to do right on. The anticipation is so high for this adaptation to the point it unfortunately became victim of one of the worst leaks in the anime industry as half of the first season alongside many other anime ended up getting leaked mere months before its official airing. But by going by the trailers released as well as word from people who were fortunate enough to see the first episode of Dandaran in Anime Expo, my trust in Sai and Saru is more than rock solid. With all of this to say, what makes Dandaran special and stand on its own is it's very unpredictable but still very down to earth way of storytelling. With how eye-grabbing the concepts in the story are, the heart of the series always goes back to the relationship between Okarun and Momo alongside the many themes that get explored as newer characters get introduced, expanding the world of Dandaran as we know it. To end this video, I would like to know what aspect of Dandaran you love and enjoy, so leave it in the comment section down below. I would also greatly appreciate liking this video and subscribing to the channel if you want to see more videos from yours truly. And with that, hope you guys have a wonderful rest of the day wherever you are. See you guys next time.